Um, hello, my name is uh, Daniel Schiavoni. Um, I'm uh, a partner at Snake Hill Web Agency in Baltimore. And I'm so happy to have you here at DrupalCon, uh, coming off that Dries note. Um, I'm, I've been really freaking out. Um, really freaking out. Uh, last uh, year in Baltimore, a, uh, a Drupal business survey came out. And uh, me and my partner, who is also my wife, we've been talking about it ever since, disagreeing, butting heads like business partners and spouses will do. And I'm happy to say uh, that I'm freaking out less after this morning's Dries note which is fantastic. And um, so, and I'm happy to say that it seems like this discussion is relevant. So, let's go. So back, uh, as I mentioned, last year, uh, around the time of Baltimore DrupalCon, we, the business survey came out. And there were some pull quotes in the survey and some data. And this is one of the pull quotes. Uh, kind of repeating a message that's been in Dries notes now for several years. That Drupal 8 is for uh, bigger enterprise projects, um, sophisticated solutions, however you want to word it. And it's been a message that's been hammered through several times. And then put into this context of being a small agency, uh, I started to freak out. So the Drupal Business Survey, 239 responses, 40 different countries. As you can see, mostly Europe, or a big chunk in Europe. Um, and then it's uh, less in Europe, about two thirds in North America, and the rest distributed. And so I'm interested, if you haven't taken a look, definitely take a look at this. Uh, so it made me think, well, what do we, you know, we're saying that, um, let me go back to that quote. The evolution of the CMS marketplace to favor more comprehensive and thus also more complex solutions is favoring bigger companies with stronger competencies through number of experts in specific fields. This can be a struggle for smaller vendors as, mas uh, as mastering clients' needs requires more ex expertise than is available in their staff. So what do we mean by big and what do we mean by small? So this is uh, uh, data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics um, showing the distribution of small companies and large companies based on number of employees. And as you can see, um, over half the companies out there are, are small. Um, very few are the larger uh, companies. So 90% of companies are under 20 employees the average business generates 1.1 million in sales and has about four employees and pays an average compensation of 41,000. Now that's across many industries, not necessarily technology. Uh, small and medium sized business businesses account for 50% of employment in the United States. So there are some trends going on in the past few years with businesses and we've all noticed this with very large companies like Walmart um, Amazon, Facebook, in, in the tech, tech uh, industries. Um, companies smaller than 500 employees, the, the firm size uh, actually shrank the past, uh, since 2001. So on average, they used to be 19 out of 13. So small companies are getting smaller. New businesses are starting to stay small. The average size of companies with between 500 and 10,000 employees has, has grown uh, tremendously, 35% during those 10 years. On average, 2,200 employees. 
Well, let's bring this back to the Drupal world. How do we measure ourselves in the Drupal world? Um, under 20, I would say, is a break point because uh, at 20, you're at direct supervision. It means uh, I own the company or I own the company with a partner. We are directly supervising everyone in the com company. Somewhere between 20 and 50, uh, in order to grow my company, and I've been at this point before, my, the previous company that I helped start, um, we were four of us the first year. We did half a million in sales. Second year, we were 12. We did 1.2 million in sales. The third year, we were around 20. We did 2.2 million in sales. And then things got complicated. Um, so between 20 and 50, the supervisors have to start supervising other supervisors. And that's where it gets complicated. And some of you may be at that break point or may have come across that before. Uh, the next step is uh, 50 to 100, uh, where the, the business owners are really disengaging from the business. Um, they're focused on growth. Um, they're disengaged in direct operations, I should say. Somewhere around 100 and 500, you become divisional, whereas uh, the, the organization is so big, you have to have division heads, and the and we start to split up, and then over 500 were considered possibly global. So I think these are good breakpoints to use uh, with the Drupal community. So what's the size in the Drupal ecosphere? This is data pulled together from the Drupal uh, marketplace on drupal.org. Um, now there's some caveats here, of course. You know, we're working with um, anytime you you look at data, you kind of have to you know, parse it, but also be critical at looking at it. So we're counting Drupal accounts associated with businesses. We're not, we're not including people in organizations who are not uh, registered on Drupal.org and having to be association. Some of these associations might be out of date, but I think the data gives us a pretty accurate picture of the lay of land in the Drupal community. This is also out of the 956 organizations in the marketplace. This is a, I only got to 502 uh, counting. After that, sometime as you go through the marketplace, the numbers are, stay pretty small. Um, organizations of single person, two people, under six. But the trend continues here. So, so I would say with this data, some of the largest are probably larger. Um, so you know they would have more support staff they might be in diverse business ventures, uh, marketing, et cetera. Um, but overall, I think this is a good picture of the lay of the land. What's interesting here is that, um, let's continue. The majority of the community works for small shops. 74% of the Drupal community provide uh, service providers have 20 employees or less. And less than 2% of Drupal service providers have over 200 employees. And then the focus of the largest of the Drupal organizations are in hosting, marketing, and consulting. And by consulting, I would say most of that is placing uh, placement, um, uh, placing uh, expertise within go back. And of this 12 and under, this big dark blue section, two-thirds are six and under. So that's pretty remarkable there. 74% the two blue areas are under, under 20. And a good chunk is in this range, that pivot range that we talked about earlier, where between 20 and 50, they're starting to supervise So it fits in with the overall um, data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, um, which is, which uh, leads me to believe that yeah, it's a pretty accurate picture. Uh, so small agencies, uh, how 
accurate as this current narrative that we're hearing some of the dreams notes, the business survey, um, how accurate is that narrative? And I, I think today at the Driesna, I was really happy that the narrative shifted in a more positive direction, at least for a person who owns a small Drupal agency. Uh, how do we rally the majority of Drupal service providers to uh, drive Drupal growth and grow our businesses? And how does this uh, majority thrive with Drupal 8? So let's talk about a few things. Let's talk about enterprise software. Um, this is the image from Altered Carbon. These are the elites living above the clouds. <laughs> OK, what is enterprise software? Because um, here's some definitions. Uh, satisfy, satisfies, satisfies the needs of an organization rather than individual users, business-oriented tools, tends to cost more, and the complexity needs specialists to implement. Um, I thought these, this was an interesting uh, take on the differences here. This person points out that the enterprise purchase a lot, purchases a lot of software, and a lot of that software is not uh, necessarily enterprise software. And the distinction is that enterprise software is, is purchased by uh, a C-level uh, manager or uh, person in the organization, often a non-technical person. Again, comforting to see in the Dries note that there's a, a focus on that. And it's purchased for the entire enterprise. So how do people sell enterprise software? So Acquia is selling to the enterprise. They have to target C-level decision makers. They engage through salespeople. Um, they have longer sales cycles, pay annually rather than monthly, add-ons and upsells, focus on big deals. But there's this thing called the consumer consumerization of IT. And that has certainly accelerated with the advent of smartphones and tablets and, and the ubiquity of electronic devices within the home. So with the average American adult spending more than 60 hours per week on a digital device, expectations change. Then they go to work, it affects the way they see enterprise software. So we have disruption of processes, processes, we see this bring your own device. We've seen it with Barack Obama, couldn't have his Blackberry anymore when he went to the White House. Uh, you go to work for IBM or a big enterprise, you have to have their computer, be on a VPN, that kind of thing. Um, consistency of user experience, expectations are higher. We tend to have multi multiple devices um, I think having a work phone and a home phone is becoming less and less. More people are using their private phone for work. Um, there's easier sharing and, and we're really expecting uh, better UIs overall. So even though we might be focused on enterprise market, consumer market is pretty important because there's faster innovation there, there's higher bar for usability and uh, it's a big market influence. Uh, consumers are enterprise decision makers, and you see this all the time, where business owners, they have an experience, they, they experience software in their private lives, they, they expect the similar experience in the workplace. Um, Often enterprise businesses, all businesses have mixed environments and there's crossover applications. So let me tell you a, a story of enterprise software. There was this enterprise software called Lotus Notes and you may or may not be familiar with it and it might elicit a groan from you. Uh, last year at Baltimore DrupalCon, I got uh, Kevin Petit, who is known as, in the Lotus world as Lotus Guru, who runs a blog, lotusguru.com, uh, to come to DrupalCon Baltimore. 
trying to lure him to the open source community. Well, let me tell you about the story. So it was groupware. The idea was to connect people. Uh, it involved email and databases. Um, individuals within the enterprise could create their own databases. There were professionals there creating databases, creating workflows. Uh, there were some interesting technical achievements among the product. It was highly secure. It used public key encryption. So you had to have the key, sound familiar? You had to have the key on your local computer. It had to match with the public key on the server in order for you to do anything. We're talking, um, when I got involved with Lotus Notes, it was early 90s, maybe 92. But it, I, you had, um, keep in mind this is enterprise uh, email software. So you had uh, the file size compared to Outlook. Outlook had a size limit, Lotus Notes didn't. It didn't matter. It had an innovative flat file database before its time. Now we talk about NoSQL. It's kind of a trend thing. Back then it was, eh, didn't matter. It was more performant email server. It needed less hardware. You stood up an exchange environment. You needed three, four servers. It couldn't handle the load as well as the, their server. It didn't matter. And in the end, Consumer software, Outlook, that was installed on every Windows machine out there, overtook it. It drove the expectations and the purchasing decisions at the management level. So what does this have to do with Drupal? Let's look at market share. And this is the trend between March 1st, 2017 and March 1st, 2018. So this is pretty current data. This is WordPress with 60% of the CMS market share and growing. Next down there, we have Joomla, which is in decline. And we have Drupal, which is in decline. So we keep saying, let's stop comparing Drupal and WordPress. We're not competing with WordPress. I think we've been wrong for several years now. We are in direct competition with WordPress. Yes, uh, software as a service is a factor. A lot of this is off of sites like WordPress.com. Um, and, but WordPress is entering the enterprise market. It's starting to nibble at the edges. Yes, our technology is better. As you can see in the previous slide, that doesn't matter. And WordPress has a large community that if it was mobilized to actually fix the things that are wrong with WordPress, <clears throat> would be a formidable opponent in the enterprise market. Let's take a closer look. So a lot of what's uh, the chatter about Drupal being enterprise software and competing in the enterprise market talks about competing with these two guys, Sitecore CMS an Adobe Experience Manager. There's Drupal with our 4.5-ish percent of CMS market share in decline, and we want to be those guys. So, yeah, let that sink in. All right. Let's, let's talk more about enterprise market. So enterprise software market is complicated. Selling to enterprise is complicated. You're, you have to sell to someone uh, who's authorized to spend uh, six figures-ish and more. Uh, consumer market influences that enterprise market and influences, influences those non-technical decision makers and giving up ground in the CMS marketplace would be a tremendous risk right now for the Drupal ecosystem. Um, 
And I would say that enterprise software, the difference is, might be more social than technical. So enterprise Drupal. Um, you might have seen, I think this uh, exact chart was in a Dries note in Baltimore. Um, it's showing Acquia up here with Sitecore and Adobe Experience Manager competing in that quadrant. Um, so this, this chart, I've struggled with this, this graph for a while. I think the first thing that um, people notice that it's Acquia, not Drupal. And, and I guess that's consistent with most of the, the graph. Um, but overall, I've, I've come to accept this. It's, this. This is good for Drupal. It measures the, but it measures the Acquia platform and not just Drupal. Um, Drupal is the center of Acquia's business strategy, but yours, your business strategy and mine uh, is different. And we have to think through how Drupal fits into our strategy. And I would point out there's a reason why the top three sponsors at the cons are hosting companies and not Drupal agencies. So the differences between Acquia and Drupal. <coughs> Business strategy, as I mentioned, as a small, uh, Drupal agency, small, medium size. Our business strategy has to be different. It can include enterprise sales, enterprise clients, but it, it probably includes more than that. Our resources are different. As we saw earlier, most of us are under 20 employees, um, and a good many of us um, a major majority are really under around 40, 50. So we're smaller. Our resources are different. Our target market may be different. There may be overlap, but it's different. And certainly our value proposition, how we sell ourselves, is different than how um, the biggest organizations sell themselves. The good thing is I think there are enough opportunities to go around. So here's more from the business survey. <clears throat> there is no easy work left, and many people who came in during the good times will not be able to sustain their careers in the new world. I, I was freaking out when I, when I read this, right? I'm a technical person, so I'm not afraid of composer or the command line. But there's something um, that, that would be quite a pivot considering uh, the trends we saw with Drupal 7. You know, it made me feel like Milton. I'm being left out. So let's, let's tackle this. Was Drupal 7 all that easy? Uh, site building did become a thing. Um, you know, we had site builders. They could be a bit less technical than some of the other people in the organization. They could do useful work to stand up Drupal sites. We had panels and things like that that were front end tools. Didn't, didn't have a lot of command line. So my question is, well, Drupal 8, who is it hard for? Um, certainly, you know, is it site builders, programmers, themers? I would say theming experience much better, user experience, better, needs work. Uh, site builder experience, it's, we're working on it. We see it in the Dries note, right? We have all these layout tools. Uh, program experience, yeah, okay, if I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a command line programmer, it's a little more complicated, right? But that's what we love, right? That's why we're programmers. So we also saw this in the, in the Dries note. This is from Matthew Grasmick. And so you've all familiar with what's going on here. Um, so it's great that we're going to address this obstacle. You know, it's, it's definitely a serious obstacle. 
but I would also question for a project between 50K, 200K, around that range, how big of an obstacle is this, right? You've got a team of developers working on a site for six months. They've got, what was it? What did it end up being? 41 clicks <laughs> this morning. They, they click through 41 times. One time, there's a site up. You know, we're good to go. We, we start work. We have six months more work after that. It's certainly a barrier in the uh, evaluation. And again, it's, it's comforting to know that that's being addressed. So we have this Drupal paradox that exists, right? We want to lower the required skills. We want lower skills because that lowers costs as a business owner. How many people are business owners here? Great, good. All right, so we all know our biggest cost of being a service provider is labor. So if we can lower the skill set and pay a little less for labor, that leaves us with more profit for growth, right? But we're raising complexity, which raises required skills, which raises the cost of, uh, cost of skills. So those two things, we seem to have uh, a paradox going on. We want Drupal to be easier to use, but we keep making it more complicated. Um, I think you know, that's oversimplification. I think we're making some strides in some areas. Drupal 7 was supposed to be a user experience release yeah, we didn't quite hit the mark. Drupal 8, I, I do believe Drupal 8 is heading in the right direction. We've got some great things going on there. <laughs> we build stuff for site builders, but we tell them Drupal 8's not their thing. And I think this is the most serious thing that's been going on the past few years since the release of Drupal 8. So we keep, we keep harping on this thing that Drupal 8 is hard. It's for uh, enterprise websites sophisticated user experiences, which all right, you can take it, you know, that's, that's fair. Um, but how do, we, how do we parse that? So we don't want to depend on this guy, is, is kind of what I'm saying. Um, I actually worked with someone who would do this, you know, be coding and, you know, I'm a god, you know, that kind of thing. We don't want to depend on this guy. Because that guy ends up like that. <coughs> then there's <coughs> the community and the long tail of Drupal contribution. We don't want, let's think about this long tail in a different way. Because in the past, we've, we've thought about the long tail as a bad thing, how to shorten the tail, get more people doing more commits. But we need that long tail. That long tail isn't out there. We don't have the, the spike at the very uh, end of the tail becomes shorter. So the Drupal community, uh, individuals and small shops, we create Drupal talent. How many people started, how many stories have we heard? There was a story during the Dries note. Yep, you know, I started playing around with it. I found that I could install Drupal, then I could, I, could, I could work with CSS, I don't have a computer science degree. You know, we've heard that story many times. So small shops, individuals are really important for creating Drupal talent. Um, small shops make contributions to core and contrib. See many um, core contributors around that are working for themselves or working for smaller organizations. Uh, smaller shops drive adoption by giving a bigger footprint to the product. And small shops, more importantly, sell a lot of Drupal. So being small, there's no com uh, comforting side note. There is no correlation between bigger companies getting bigger and smaller companies closing. So um, there's no direct correlation. We can say that, yeah. <clears throat> so let's look at uh, some positive things. Uh, employment amongst uh, web developers 
is on the rise. It's expected to grow 15% in the next 10 years. We've got the uh, social media ad spending is expected to pass newspapers in 2020. Some of these are industry drivers. One million Drupal 7 sites will need to be migrated in the near future. Around 46% of websites do not use a CMS. Nearly half of small businesses do not have a website. The majority of websites are still not mobile friendly. And this bottom one got cut off, but basically um, Congress in late December passed the Connected Government Act, which requires all federal agencies that create or redesign their websites for public use to be um, to the greatest extent possible to be mobile friendly. So there's a lot of work to be done here. And small, medium, uh, Drupal, Drupal agencies are there to do it. Um, there's also the mid-market. Uh, they tend to be 100 to 500 employees, 10 million to 1 billion annual revenue. Um, they make technology purchases and they tend to focus on functionality, reporting capabilities. Um, and if this market were its own country, it would be the fourth largest economy in the world. So the small, medium business market and in, the, in Europe, it is referred to as the small, medium enterprise market is pretty substantial. So how do we compete against the bigger Drupal agencies? Well, we make uh, size our strength, right? Flexibility, speed, nimble. We, we're personal. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of business owners, a lot of business managers like talking to the owner, to the boss. Um, we make that personal. We're local. A lot of people will select, make their selection based on, a, you know, I can actually meet with you in person. That's a selling point. We can be unique in our own ways. And we can also work with the larger, um, larger businesses. And uh, selling our small agency Drupal is around, you know, there's several places where we can sell around. Uh, being nimble with our design and builds, personalized support. Uh, you know, there are some areas you need to diversify in, might be content marketing. Uh, there might be things that you can focus and specialize in, like upgrades and migrations. And being the consultant, being the shock troops. Dropping it, especially I was talking to uh, a person who is a freelancer, uh, I think uh, yesterday, and just talking about how he can drop in either to another large agency or to a client to solve a problem for a, time, a period of time and then move on to the next place to solve a problem. And that's what we can do as, as small uh, Drupal agencies. And uh, we can also leverage complementary technologies. So, you know, we show clients, you know, things like MailChimp, looking at analytics, that kind of thing, being the cons consultants, being the web, web strategists uh, for their business. Uh, so in conclusion, don't panic. Uh, we're open source. You can stay involved, let your voice be heard, uh, contribute, help to steer the ship. I think um, I think as small uh, and medium-sized Drupal agencies, I think we need to be more active and more vocal. Um, we need to get our message out. Um, <clears throat> it'd be great to see uh, some sort of initiate, initiative around growing this core Drupal uh, market, the core Drupal service providers, 74% of the Drupal, Drupal community. Um, so it'd be great to see that conversation continue. 
Um, and we're in demand, and Drupal has always been for the enterprise. It's never been a, a tool to build restaurant sites, right? Um, some of that might have been going on, but it's never been really suited for that. So it's, in many ways, there's nothing new. So there's some uh, related uh, talks going on tomorrow. You might want to check out In Defense of Small Drupal. Um, I think th this is more technical oriented, how to improve Drupal and make it m more suitable for, uh, uh, for uh, you know, easier for people to implement, for individuals to uh, lower the barriers to entry. Uh, and then we have WordPress versus Drupal, how the website industry is evolving. That's uh, Zach Rosen from Pantheon. Uh, half the sites on Pantheon, there are 200 sites on, 200,000 sites on Pantheon, half of them are WordPress. Uh, but I bet they, they haven't taken a chip out of WordPress.com yet. So it, it's very interesting. And I think they have, by doing that, was a very smart move uh, on their part. I mean, that's, and, and I'd love to talk more around, around that. Uh, we've heard a lot of, for a lot of talk about, uh, again in the in the Drupal Business Survey, they talk about agencies doing more WordPress to kind of use for the, the smaller sites, and I I understand the logic behind that, but I don't understand. Yeah, there's something there's something not that's not jiving with me on that, right? All right, so references, these are some posts out there. Um, Drupal is the worst content management system except for all those other solutions. That's a really great um, place to start to find out more about this topic. We've got other, other decent posts. Have we reached peak Drupal? So this is a conversation that's happening out in the community and I think it's, I think it's being heard. Um, I think it was interesting at the Dries note uh, Matthew Grasmick getting a, shout, a major shout out for his uh, work there. Um, some of these other posts. So people are listening. So it's very important to have that conversation, having that conversation out in public to improve things. And again, I think the Dries note really calmed some of my uh, freaking out for the past year. So I'll open this up for questions or discussion. Yes, sir. Yeah, I was at the um, Pantheon Partner Day yesterday. So I've, I've already seen what Zach's gonna talk about and you should go do it. There were some really interesting insights. Great. Especially with him having, again, all those WordPress and Drupal on one platform. I think we're seeing some things that, you know, in Aqua you wouldn't see because they don't have the, the insight into WordPress. Cool. Anyone else? Small business, come on, Joe. Joe. Daniel, that was great. Uh, I've been stressing last year myself, so we probably should have gotten a coffee a year ago. But uh, I, I wanted to say that I, I, you know, without, I don't know who, it's a very small sampling, that survey, but certainly something to be attended to. And you wonder who sent it out. Was it driven by a major hosting provider that has a very heavily, heavy influence in the, uh, in the Drupal community? Or, um, but two things that I think resonated from what you had said was first, working with larger businesses I think is helping a small agency like mine because there's so much more than just Drupal now that companies are looking for or, or web CMS. Uh, and then the, so that's a positive thing. Uh, I think also selling our subject matter, matter expertise or situational fluency if you're a small agency, uh, you know, that gravitas of the original founder that's been doing this for a long time, something very hard for large enterprises to, uh, you know, to, to try to copy when they're going in and talking with a, a prospect. Uh, and then on the other side, which I wanted to hear more about, we've seen in the last six months a lot more uh, prospects that are wanting to go to WordPress, uh, which is surprising you know, uh, to us because we haven't seen as much. We don't do WordPress. And then a lot more customers are saying, well, they want to do a Sitecore Epi server. So it's almost like a return to 10, 15 years ago. Uh, and I wondered if other people were seeing the same kind of a thing. Uh, 
you know, we're a New York City agency, but we do operate all around the, uh, the East Coast. <clears throat> yeah, I, I don't have any additional data for that. I, you know, I was curious about um, the sampling size, and when I saw that Europe was so well represented amongst that sampling, I know that uh, some of the people working on the survey were Europe-based. I wonder if uh, that had an influence. Uh, I, I think we can get the raw data, and I'd be interested in taking a look at that. It also shows the, you know, when you, when you do pull quotes from respondents, I wonder um, what's the best practice for that, you know? Because you're, you're focusing in on something, you're making a, a subjective decision when you pull something out like that, um, which makes me question it. Um, and as far as the competitive market, I do think, <clears throat> I do think we got to look at the full spectrum. I don't think we can say uh, WordPress is for blogs; it's not a factor because it, it is a major factor, and we're we're seeing it. We're seeing it encroaching in on, in on you know Drupal sites being replaced with WordPress, Drupal, WordPress doing larger sites. Now we know all the technical difficulties with that, but like I like I mentioned earlier, it's not about the decision makers at that point are not technical. They're not making technical decisions. You could have a they you could have a product that's worse technically and a product that's better. And that is not necessarily a factor, depending on the advocate who's advocating within the organization. I was thinking about something lately that I think maybe summarizes a key pain point that our small agency has perpetually had and wondering if you had thoughts or, or advice on it. In being a small agency, doing Drupal and therefore large projects, we're doing these big thousand, several thousand hour engagements is our typical kind of thing. <clears throat> we are always seemingly in the situation of not having much redundancy in our uh, active client base. So we can become very dependent on whatever large project we're actively doing. Yesterday at the business summit, the uh, uh, guys from Summit Accounting Agency said they try to make sure all their clients who are Drupal agencies do not rely on any particular customer for more than 10% of their revenue, which is a lovely goal. I don't know <laughs> how I possibly achieve it. And it seems like there's therefore an inherent uh, malalignment of being a small shop if you're doing large projects. If we were a much larger number of people, we could have a much larger number of large projects going on simultaneously, and then if one you know, <coughs> gets plug pulled or whatever, we're not dependent on it. Do you see that as an actual configuration on it? What Two resources for this. There's a book called The E-Myth Revisited, and our business consultant has assigned it to us right off the bat. It talks about this dependency on one large client and and how, how what a negative effect that can have on your business. And number two is last year at DrupalCon Baltimore, there was a session that uh, Jam did. It was down on the product floor. They did it with the head of uh, Typo3, and they talked about SLAs, selling SLAs, service level agreements, right? And that's really the business that Acquia is in enterprise SLAs, um, and Pantheon is in that business. And guess what? We're in that business too. So if you have a, a retainer with a client, you're giving them an SLA. You're saying, okay, you've got this site. It's, it's complicated. We're supporting that site. And that's a, I think that's a good regular stream of income. And you can do things with that <clears throat> by saying, okay, you know, not only you have keeping the site up and running, but how can we increase traffic to the site? How can we help you manage content for the site? Um, is, you know, you, you do, I do think there's a need to diversify, whether that's within your organization or with the partners, to offer other services like uh, online content marketing, uh, certainly the support agreements, um, I think the days of us uh, managing hosting, you know, that, that's a high risk 
in my mind. But you can white label things. So Platform SH has a wonderful program for agencies. Now the big three hosting options, theirs is the most technically complex, but it's also the most uh, fluid of the three. But I, knew that, I do know that Pantheon is restructuring their hosting agreements, so if there's a gap, you know, you get the $25 starter, and then you got $100, and then you got $400, and then you have $12,000. It's like a, there's clients in between that, and I think that's, and I think there's, for us and for uh, larger agencies, there are clients who are in between. Like our target is 50 to 200,000. That's our, that's our sweet spot, right? Um, so yeah, creating those, I don't know if we'll ever get to 10%, you know? We'll always be, uh, we'll always have that stress, I think. I think that's probably unrealistic until you get up to that 30, 40, 50 uh, employee level. And a lot of us decide not to do that. I don't wanna be that big. I've been there before. I've been to that inflection point. We were at 24 employees. We had a chief operating officer. We had two salespeople. I was managing eight, nine people at a time, um, which is, that's, you're maxed out at that point. Uh, my partners were managing X amount of people. We were, we were doing great, but it, it suddenly changed. And we were, we were gonna change into a body shop. We, at that point, I wasn't doing Drupal up. I was doing, we were doing, I was in charge of the software, all the software development. And we were changing into a body shop, and that's another business model, placing people in seats. And that's what a lot of the bigger organizations are doing, especially around our area in Baltimore, Washington, with all the uh, federal work, is that placing those, what do they call them, FTEs, you know? Um, but that's not a business that interests me. I mean, I, I like the creative part, which is the higher risk part, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? It'd be great to have more uh, conversation. Certainly after this, I'd love to find a way to do this after. Hello, uh, I came here from Ukraine, so I'm interested in about cooperation between agencies, right? So, for example, I'm working kind of a big company, but Drupal Direction started just, I think, three, four years ago, and in my city, I'm in small cities, so we just started a team from three people, and we grow to team of 10 people during the year. And what is interesting experience which we have, this is that we are looking for small cities like uh, regional cities in Ukraine and we kind of trying to uh, build cooperation between agencies. So for example, we have strong on one direction. For example, you mentioned about subject matter expertise, right? Mm -hmm. So we have like strong BAs, requirements managers, but Drupal is what we're developing. For example, vice versa. And then when we join together, we can do actually bigger project for big enterprise or like so, so for anybody because when small agencies like are cooperating they becoming like big team with still independent sub agencies right if it's split together right so it's interesting about similar experience if you have oh yeah and I, I think the partnering thing is real important too um, we didn't get it on the schedule this year yet but I've, I'm gonna run up to the main room and hopefully there'll be a slot for a BOF. We've been doing a BOF every year since Chicago. I even hear when I didn't show up in LA, they still did it. It was called Freelancer Speed Dating. And we all get in a room and we meet each other. And I've met so many people that have, have relationships like from that over the years, even though you might not pull them into something for several years but you'll see them. The next, I mean, I think it's real important to have opportunities, especially in the next few days, to, to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with each other. That, that for me, is, makes DrupalCon worthwhile. If I can have some great conversations uh, with individuals and get to know people more. Um, I, um, like many years ago, I saw, uh, it's, it's funny how you get connections. So many years ago, uh, there was a friend of mine a now friend of mine, Val, uh, Val he's known as Val the Bald on uh, Drupal.org. And he tweeted like, oh, like, I've just been fired, basically I've been fired from my job. And I tweeted to him, well, there's no reason to worry. You know, you find, and we started a conversation, he ended up working for us for several years. 
and now he works for FFW. And through him, I met other people around the world, and we can take advantage of that global economy. I, I, but the, where there works with me is where I have individual relationships with people. So uh, we have a developer who's been with us for five years. He's in Israel. Um, and that relationship, uh, we didn't meet in person until last year in Baltimore. And he had his whole family with him. It was, it was great. So, you know, I think partnering is, you know, there's an art to it. And I think you got to spend some time nurturing those, those relationships. You never know, there's certain things. You, you never can tell by how a person looks whether they're going to be a good client, a good employee, you can't, you can't make that judgment. It's so important to keep an open mind and keep those conversations going. Don't rush it. You know, it's like, you're the, you know, sometimes you hear it, it's like dating, you know? You, know you, you go out for coffee first, you know, but lunch, non-committal. And over time, you nurture those relationships. You never know where they go. But that's where being a small business, that's why that's why I enjoy it so much. It's about those those individual relationships, not you know, it's very personal. But thanks. Yep, thanks thank for doing that. Yeah. Uh, this is a conversation that has been very interesting to me f over the past couple of years for the same reasons. Uh, in uh, New Orleans we had a boff for small Drupal shops. Um, and so we're doing that boff again tonight at 5 o'clock if oh, anybody's great. interested in discussing more unique pain points for smaller organizations. Uh, but out of that, we started a, a, a Slack channel, smalldrupalshop.slack.com. And so there's a couple of us small agencies, and we've been able to do some of that um, where you know I had uh, more work than we could do, and another shop was looking for work, and we were able to partner, like he's talking about, and kind of work together and... Um, solve a problem for us, but provide work for them. So uh, if anybody's interested, to, you can jump on there and request an invite, and we'll add you. So, Great. Yeah. Smalldrupalshop.slack.com. Yes, and I, I, there, was a, there was a Drupal a group on Drupal.org called Microshop, yeah. and I did get admin access to that. So maybe I'll attend the BOF, and maybe we can talk about strategizing uh, you know communications like I, I would thinking that the the small Drupal shop slack channel needs to, needs to be needs to be a channel within Drupal's channel um, so that might be something that we consider there is one there too it's just hard with the all the, the uh, <laughs> good point so yeah so like a good communication strategy, making these connections and fostering them in between camps and, and yeah, that, that's great. Uh, one more? No. Yeah. Like my experience with, I have struggled with the same problems and um, so I trying to reach to a lot of startup uh, communities to like sell more them into the Drupal since it's more complex than WordPress for example or you can do more things. So I'm, I'm trying to see if there is room for uh, improvement there and maybe you have experiences to uh, with some because I mean it's not necessarily blog or e-commerce side but you know uh, do you have experience with startups to using Drupal for? yeah um, my experience uh, startups have not been good clients for us um, <clears throat> they're bootstrapping they're they've got to be especially lean you can, they are very accessible, and, and even in uh, Baltimore, there's, um, there's, uh, there's uh, this organization called Technically. It's a dot L-Y, and they hold these uh, breakfasts, tech breakfasts, uh, around, um, they're around the U.S., and they, so they do dog and pony shows, and you can go to, and go there and network with startups. So it's a good place to find people, but I think you have to vet. You have to be careful about vetting them. Um, they they're really tight on budget, and they're, they 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 tend to be technical people. And they're tough clients. That's just my you know personal experience. I hope you do better. <laughs> um, Daniel, I own a small agency, and I had a question. Or maybe How small? It's an, what size? 
Uh, we are a team of 30 people. Uh, we have an office in India as well. That's very good. Thank you. The, uh, one you know, of the, the largest shop in Germany, I was talking to a woman uh, yesterday, it's about 30 people. Thank you. She's the largest shop in Germany. Interesting. So one of my experience has been that uh, uh, with Drupal, uh, when you inherit projects uh, which are being done by some other developers or some other agencies, and you see that they have not followed the good practices and they blame it on technology because the business people have no understanding of what uh, uh, the content types and blocks and paragraphs are. And when you try to educate them and try to do the right thing for them, in some sense it is kind of backfiring you. And sometimes WordPress is so easy to make them, I guess, understand that. Just curious if you had any thoughts or uh, if you want to share any comments on that. Um, we've, we've done a lot of uh, um, uh, salvage product projects. You know, come across um, our last big one, we were the third vendor. It went through t two other vendors. We were very frustrated. Um, I don't know the exact amount of money they spent, but they probably spent, you know, about, you know, over $100,000 already with two vendors over a two-year period and had nothing to show for it. Um, so it is a, it, I think it's a, it's a good area to target, but it's also, it, it takes nuance, right? It takes, you have to be really straightforward. Uh, your documentation, everything has to be um, far more detailed because you're already starting in a, in a position of mistrust, right? And so you've got to go the extra mile to reestablish the trust, even though you're not the person who, 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 who started on the wrong track, right? Um, so you got to up your game, which is not necessarily a bad thing. You should probably be upping, you know, looking at all those things to do better across the board for new clients, better communications, better uh, documentation, managing client experience, uh, client expectations. But yeah, that, that has been an area that we've, we've worked in a, quite a bit. And I do think it's a, a there, there are unfortunately quite a few uh, uh, organizations out there have been, have had a bad experience with other vendors. All right, that it. I see Amanda's here, so we're ready to switch, change the guard. Five o'clock, do you know which room? The small Drupal? I think it's uh, Boff One. Boff One. Boff One room at five. All right, I'll be there. Thank you. Thank you.